I seem to be the chairman of the Pet Model Works, which remains to be seen. But uh, I think all good. Uh, Angela Bloss is vice chair. We have just started, but welcome. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'll set this evening, you know who I am. <laughs>
the Merseyside Pension Fund, um, as you'll recall, uh, those of you over here, that there was an issue, excuse me, an issue uh, back in 2015, late, regarding the procurement of some advisory services to the fund. Um, a piece of work was undertaken in February 2016 and identified a, uh, an issue regarding compliance with the contract to see the rules. It was reported to yourselves. On the back of that, it was decided that we, uh, as a terminal, would go back and look at contract procedures, compliance across the whole fund over all the contracts at the level last couple of years to make sure that it was an isolated incident and not sort of an indication of a potentially big problem. The follow-up work that we've done, the conclusions reached were that the procedures in place are effective. Uh, we've made a number of suggestions regarding improvements that can be made, but we're confident the principle that compliance with the contract procedure rules is embedded within the fund and that this was very much uh, one individual operating in, in, in the way that was kind of assigned so that the policy and procedures in place. That individual has been dealt with down there, you just have to bring it by HR and as well. In terms of the, the, the overall bigger picture, there is compliance with the contract procedure rules, which is just there to achieve the policy. Uh, just so you can kind of hear you, what do you want from that one? Yeah, um, that was one that was factored to me. Concerns in the department on, on how you are monitoring this because obviously one of the officers made a mistake and this is what they picked up and it, which is great, this is why we have all the And in the scheme of things, you know, um, orders are designed to kick out a lot of these problems and, and there isn't a great deal here, but the, the few major ones that there is, it, it's, it's pretty major yeah. and that's one of them. What are you doing internally to, to audit? Those officers that have got these jobs within the department. Because it seems to me that's gone on for some time before it was picked up, and, and perhaps it should have been picked up at an earlier stage, being a major issue. Um, it's, it's a management issue, it's not only an issue, it's, 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 it's sort of clarified that it, it, the systems are owned by managers, the systems are controlled are owned by managers, it's on them to ensure that there's adequate sort of policy and procedure in place. Our role is, as you quite rightly point out, to sort of come in on a, uh, on a kind of us on an occasional kind of basis and undertake some sample testing or some sample review work to see how the pulse those controls are and feedback to senior managers on the effectiveness of those controls and those systems. Um, on this occasion, there was obviously an issue identified by the quarterback. The work that we then did with the management was to sort of identify a, a system that the all tighten up the existing system and there were a number of improvements made regarding how they should. Regular basis, bringing the policy procedure to the attention of all those senior managers to get them to sign off on the fact that they all have to be compliant and need to be compliant throughout sort of uh, the year. Um, it was more a tweaking of what is effectively you know, a decent policy procedure. You can never really legislate for one kind of rogue individual for whatever reason. Kind of thing. Um, I would say that there are good, effective management checks in place within the fund. Um, clearly, this issue did slip through. Just following up to the last question, I had a similar concern on reading the my concern. Thank you for the first time this year. But these ones are on page 18, page 20, um, 21, and 22, and 23. They do seem to have occurred quite regularly over the last year and in regular range in different forms of being a major problem. I'm referring now to the ones my identified as being major. We've got the sports and recreation percent and the MDF investments contract. Maybe I'm making it under the project for the But yes, the corporate procurement is one that's really been for a long time. As I mentioned it on the notifications. And the issue regarding data loss and uh, IT services, those have been discussed regularly in this meeting, and I'm sure those who are present will recall. And I understand you're reporting on what, as you see it, everything is not an audit. My concern is that it doesn't, without accusing anybody of anything, it doesn't necessarily seem to be as much positive action as it should be in overcoming these problems so that you don't have to report them as an agent in the issue report. And that is giving me increasing concern because I know I've read, particularly procurement, I know I've read it on four occasions in the last four 
want can we do about it? Let's fight about it. Think about it. Think about it. it just seems to continue. We don't seem to get to grips with it. And I'm wondering what influence you can have, or somebody can have, in making sure that this uh, this doesn't continue. It's in all our interest to make sure that all its the services we provide are properly run and properly invested. My concern is that some of them aren't. Jeff, I want to Jeff again. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is oh, this is an isolated one. Off. This is not a regular item on on, on you know. So, uh, but except that you know, we have seen some some of the other issues before, but not in relation to the pension. No, sorry, I was referring to all of them. Yeah. Apologies for that. Too much. I was just jumping on the back of that. Yeah. Thing, and that's one of them that's just been picked up, but it relates to others.
because they have to fill a form in saying which ones we're interested in, and then I gather that it gets forwarded around if um, I don't answer from this and they block. But I want to come back to the issue of direct payments, uh, which is on page 23 in big print, or small seven in the small print. Um, and this one seemed to arise because of staff changeovers. And my gut reaction was, if there are procedures in place, then whoever the staff are, follow a procedure. <coughs> staff changeovers shouldn't mean too much disruption. And because um, we have such a problem with um, ensuring the data payment system works, it was controversial when it first came in. And take up was difficult, and people had to be encouraged to go on a whole range of things that I'm vaguely aware of. I was concerned that this, the first review was in April 2016, but the first review before that was dated down to June 2015. So this could argue has been perceived, been going on for a year, and we have a review or some updated work in October. I was pondering on the title because we divide these into follow up audit is completed, but does a third, perhaps we should have a report, a section in C which says follow up audit is going to be further chased up or whatever, rather than implying that thing is completed because it doesn't get more work happening in October. Yeah. 
own job in pointing out that's not the point. The point I've made and I will continue to make is somebody down the line is not taking sufficient notice of them, which means you have to keep monitoring them and bringing them up and quite rightly telling us what's going on. But it makes for the devil's public in simple terms. It makes us look impotent because we're reporting these things. They get these minutes like this, they these notes, and we think, oh, you know, what the hell's going on? I'm not getting anywhere with all this. So somewhere along the line, there's got to be a, a working connection, not a weak link in the chain, between you doing quite rightly what you're doing and pointing out the problem, and somebody else taking proper note of it, due account of it, and sorting out the problem. That's really my conclusion. That's very simple. Simple as that. Well, I think that's very, very, very clearly stated, and I think it's been worth some of um, the whole talk of the discussion. I found the
step on that. Uh, during the summer means during the summer to me. Mr. Salt is saying what its time scale is being worked on. But also, it's not well to Well, it's yes. not like you look after all this time. We're asking in the early part of the summer, so we'll uh, uh, point this to you. Thank you very well. To item four. I will take it. Item four, then. Yes. Item four, then. Yes. This is the Chief uh, of the annual report. Um, I, uh, as the Federal Board for the Council, am mandated to provide you on an annual basis with a sort of report that uh, identifies the way we take part in the Federal Service during the year and provides an opinion as to the effectiveness of the overall effectiveness of the uh, Council's control environment. Um, the opinion identified in this report reflects the way we've been undertaken throughout 2015 16. Slight increase there to modest increase from 
going to handle us and what would the risks Briefly, what would the risks involve in just those two, which might give us a flavour of the sort of risks that encompass all these particular situations? Any idea what the risk was? No, I think it's just a sum. The sum is getting written down. I must have met the school too, so I can't remember. I can come back to you with more detail. In terms of the, okay, now I can give you maybe not too specific to do, but the type of risk of being handled. Let's say schools, for example. Sometimes the financial procedures aren't, aren't as robust as they need to be in terms of sort of their income and the city. Um, sometimes the banking arrangements like that uh, it, it's quite a common problem when we in schools. Uh, compliance with sort of financial, it, it tends to be predominantly around the, the finance of the schools. Finance of schools is... is so again, the positive about procurement around that. I, I won't repeat the details. I know situations where schools have had a slightly
two questions. First one is on page 39, what is NPR? I'm not sure. And um, the second one, um, on page 47, when you said about, um, you spoke about internal audit, and it says that there's been an 83% increase on um, reports of suspected fraud. I was just wondering, what do we know what conversion rate is in terms of, um, you know, they being items of concern, or uh, I know it says there it's around kind of increased awareness, um, there'd be like fraud awareness training that's come on, but those are the two questions. The three years here, the one is. The first question relates to uh, non domestic rates. Okay. Yeah, um, the, answer, the second one is related yeah. to the fraud. You might be aware that. Maximum. 
in 2015 and then 2014. So the system has changed without trying to get to grips with what it actually means. And I think I understand that David was correctly saying that lots of things, you can find lots of listed things that are minor. So there's a school governor who tried to get to grips with SFVS or whatever it's called and all things are supposed to comply with. Then I appreciate that fucking money was saying for hide to put in the key or whatever it might be, 